Hey folks, today I put together for all of you a full tutorial all about the application known as Pages. This software is made by Apple, it's totally free, and you can use it to create or modify documents on either your Mac, iPhone, iPad, and technically you can even use it on a Windows PC or a Google Chromebook just by going to iCloud.com and logging in with your Apple ID. Before we begin, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that while Pages is a great solution for a lot of people out there, it isn't for everyone. And usually, the exception to that rule tends to be folks who work in an office environment where the majority of the other computers that are being used are all Windows PCs. If this applies to you, you should quit your job immediately and start making YouTube videos. I'm kidding. But if that does apply to your situation, just know that Microsoft Office may be a better solution. Pages for Mac, coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey folks, thank you for joining me today. And if you've never seen my tutorial videos before, if you wanna learn how to better use your Mac and all the other Apple accessories, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Just be sure to click the little bell icon for notifications. We have a lot to cover today, so if you decide that you would like to skip ahead to a very specific section, I have listed time codes to each chapter down below in the video description. Finally, before we dive in, I just wanted to say that if you need help with using your Mac, please know that I do offer remote private lessons and you can book an appointment with me right through my website at techtalkamerica.com slash private lessons. Without any further ado, let's switch to my Mac. When we first go into Pages, we are presented with a Finder window. So for example, if I wanted to start by opening a document that I was already working on, I could just navigate to that document right from here. But we're gonna be starting from scratch today, so let's just click where it says New Document here at the bottom left. This brings us to the Template Chooser, and if you are design challenged like me, these templates are your new best friend. Everything that you see here in these templates can be swapped out. So for example, wherever you see photos, you can swap those photos out with your photos. For those of you who are in school, this second row will be especially helpful. Here you can see we have a whole bunch of different templates for various types of reports. And even if you're not in school, keep in mind, these are all placeholders. So you could be working on a totally different type of project and still find one of these templates helpful in creating your document. As we scroll down here, you can see we have a few different types of templates if you're looking to actually create a book. And this is all designed so that if you want to self-publish your book and get it in the iBookstore, you can do that. Scrolling down a bit further, we have eight different templates for various types of letters. Personally, I'm a big fan of the photo letter. Next, you'll see we have six different templates for various types of resumes. And here we have a few varieties of different types of posters and flyers. Scrolling down a bit more, we have a few different types of newsletters. These are great for all sorts of different organizations. So if you're involved with some sort of a church group or an organization of some sort, they can be really helpful in creating something that looks professionally put together. Below, we have greeting cards, envelopes, business cards, and certificates. And I know a lot of teachers out there love using those certificates with their students. And finally, at the very bottom, we have a very simple invoice, which we're gonna come back to later on because I'm gonna eventually show you how to create your own custom template. And finally, we have a few simple trifold brochures. For now, let's just create a blank document as we start to go through navigating some of the various menus here in Pages. Up here in View Options, we have the ability to add page thumbnails to the left-hand side of your document. And if you're dealing with a lengthy document, this can definitely make navigation a bit easier. Speaking of long documents, Apple has also made it really easy to assemble a table of contents. All you have to do to set a chapter is to go over here to the right-hand side, and under Format, you'll see we have our paragraph styles. And so when you're creating a document, all you need to do to assign a chapter is just highlight the text, go over here to Paragraph Styles, and select Heading. And that's it. Since we're talking about a table of contents, I should probably also mention that if you change your document and move things around so that the pages shift, that's okay. This will update completely on its own. To keep the pacing going, I'm gonna skip over the rest of the items in this list because I doubt many of you really need them. The next item that we're gonna go over here at the top left is the zoom level on your document. 
You know, just the other day, I was doing a remote session with a client of mine who was using Microsoft Word, and no matter what she did, it would always open up with this crazy window configuration. That's not the case here in Pages. By the way, if you want to change the default zoom level, that is actually under Preferences, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Here we have all of your various insert options. So for example, if you need to insert a page break, the page number, a footnote, a hyperlink, you can see you have all of those options right here. Next, we can add a table to our document by clicking here. And notice those little arrows on the sides. We can click on those and get different color options. Let's create a really simple one just for now. And as you can see here, to add or remove any rows or columns, I can just click on either of these parallel lines and then I can manually tell it how many more rows or columns to add. Should you need to sort whatever data that you put in here, just click on this little arrow here on the side of our column. Let's delete that and now go over here into charts. We have three different options here, 2D, 3D, and interactive. The last of those, I think you're probably more likely to use in Keynote than in Pages. With any of these options, when you select one, let's just choose a 3D pie chart for now, you'll see that when I click on this graphic, I get the option to edit the chart data. So I just swap out whatever data they have, put in my data, and then boom, you've got a 3D pie chart. Another thing that's pretty cool about this type of chart is that you can rotate it. And let's say I want one of these chunks to really stand out. I just click on one of these wedges and then go over here into the format menu. And if you look down here at the bottom, we have wedge position, distance from center. And so there I can pull it out and remove it to really make it stand out. The next item that you'll see here is a simple text box. These are great when you have text that you just need to have float on top of your document. Sometimes I use these when I'm layering text on top of something like a graphic. Next we have shapes, and in the latest update, we now have a whole bunch of different types of symbols that you might need at some point in time. And here in media, you can see that we can add photos, an image gallery, movies, music, recorded audio, or choose some sort of another file. And for those of you who are running macOS Mojave, you'll see that you can take a photo right from your iPhone, or you can also use this feature to scan a document and bring that right into your document from pages. This is a really super feature, and unfortunately, because of how we are set up here at Tech Talk America, I can't demo that feature for you. But it's a really great feature, and I hope you will consider checking it out. The next item that we have here is the ability to add a comment, and this works hand in hand with the next item, which is the ability to collaborate with others. For those of you who work on documents with other people, this feature makes it super easy even if you're working with someone who is a Windows PC user. They can still access and make changes to this document just by using it through iCloud.com. Let me repeat that just to make a point. One of the major advantages of using Pages to create documents is that you can be on someone else's computer and still be able to access and modify any of your documents just by logging in with your Apple ID to iCloud.com. Just be aware that in order to access and modify your documents from iCloud.com, that would imply that you do in fact need to store your documents in iCloud. Here under formatting options, you'll find paragraph styles, which I already mentioned, all your font and alignment and spacing options. And if you want to create a list that either uses bullet points or numbers, you'll find those here at the bottom. If we go back to the top of that menu, you'll see we have a few layout options, which include the ability to add multiple columns. And this is where you can also go to change default spacing and tab options. Switching over to document options, you'll see we have three tabs at the top. We can specify our paper size and orientation, and below that, your header, footer, and document margin lengths. I have my doubts that you guys will be using many of the other options here under the other two tabs, so I'm going to purposefully skip over them. We're now going to ever so briefly discuss some of the preferences here in Pages, so let's go up to the top left where it says Pages and go into Preferences. Here under General, you'll see the option to disable the template chooser. This will make it so that when you go to create a new document, the default action will simply be a blank document. If you choose to use this option, you can still get back the template chooser just by holding down the Option key on your keyboard when you click into the File menu. As we now go back to Preferences, here you can see we have the ability to change the default zoom on your document so that when you open up pages, it's formatted just the way you like it. 
Personally, I like to keep it around 150%, but if you have trouble with your vision, this is definitely a preference you might want to check out. Let's now skip over to the autocorrect menu. I feel like autocorrect is usually a good thing, but sometimes it can definitely screw things up. All of your options to have autocorrect run, ignore specific words, and auto-capitalize you'll find right here. At the bottom, you'll see an option for text replacement. My recommendation is that while this feature can save you a lot of time, I think you're better off setting this up through your Mac's system preferences. That way, when you go to use text replacement, it works on all applications, not just pages. If you're not familiar with this feature, this is the ability to type in a few keystrokes and then have it replace those letters with a custom response. So let's say you have one of those jobs where you get the same questions over and over and over. This feature is a miracle time saver. And even though this is technically a little bit off topic, I'd like to take a moment to show you how to set it up. Let's start by going here to the Apple icon at the top left of your Mac and go into System Preferences. From here, let's go into Keyboard, and then we'll click on where it says Text. As you can see here, we have two columns, Replace and With. So when it comes to the word that you would list under Replace, I would recommend that you actually make it two words, but don't use any spaces. The reason is that if the word that you use is something too common, you could accidentally trigger it at a time where you didn't mean to. So that's why I just usually make it two words that I can easily remember and then put them together without any spaces. One of the ways that I've used this in the past is I hate having to constantly type out driving directions to my home. So I just made it so that when I type in driving directions, all one word, it would autofill everything. This is a great feature, so I encourage you to get creative because the world these days is all about productivity. I've been thinking about creating a dedicated video just on the best practices of text replacement. So if you have a great idea for how to really use this feature, let me know down below in the comments section. Who knows, you might get your name mentioned in one of my future videos. Whenever I create one of my tutorials, one of the things that I like to incorporate are the common questions that I get from my clients. And one of the things that I know confuses a lot of people about pages is the topic of save as. And if we go here into the file menu, I'll show you what I mean. A lot of people, especially anyone who has ever used Microsoft Word, is used to having a save as feature. But as you can see here, all we have is duplicate. Or do we? Just by holding down the Option key on your keyboard, you can resurrect the Save As feature. Don't ask me why they hit it like that. I teach this stuff. I didn't write it. While we're here in the File menu, I'd also like to point out that if you ever need to send your document to a Windows PC user, there are technically two different ways that you can do that. You could go through File, Export, and export it as a Word document, but the other option is to simply share the document and then send a copy of it through your email. This prevents you from having to create multiple versions of the same document, and this can be a really handy feature for a lot of people. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying this video. We're gonna take a quick commercial break and then we'll pick right up where we left off. We'll be right back. One of the topics that we're not going to be discussing in today's video, just to save on some time, are the various hotkey combinations like copy, paste, select all, undo, etc. So I just want to say that if you're a relatively new to Mac user, I have a free PDF guide that has all of the most commonly used hotkey combinations. You can download it either through my website at techtalkamerica.com, just go to the little PDF guides page, or there's an additional link for you down below in the description of this video. I would like to now show you how to modify a pre-existing template and ultimately create your own template. This will save you time so that whenever you call up that template, you don't need to swap out the fields that are gonna be consistently the same, like your business name, sales tax percentage, maybe your logo, etc. Let's go into the template chooser and pull up that invoice template that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So let's say we have this gal named Debbie, and Debbie loves dahlias, and she needs to have a simple invoice so that it's already got all of her info on it. I'm just gonna make a few little changes to this document, remove any irrelevant fields, update the sales tax, and I'll add in a couple of custom fields, maybe one for a customer name and another for a customer ID number. 
all I need to do to let pages know that this information is ultimately going to get swapped out is I need to highlight that text, then go up here into the Format menu, go to Advanced, and select Define as Placeholder Text. I'll do the same for the customer name, and when I'm done, I'll just go up here into the File menu, and instead of clicking Save, I'm going to select Save as Template. Now, the next time I go into my template chooser, I will be able to find this template at the very bottom of the list. Another trick that I wanted to make sure I mentioned in this video is how to access special characters. So let's say, for example, I need to type the word resume. In order to get the little tilde above each of the E's, all I need to do is hold down the E key. When you do, you'll see a series of options and then you can just tap on the corresponding number on your keyboard. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Let me know if this video helped you by leaving me a comment down below and be sure to hit that little like button. I'll see you next time everyone. This is David Acox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.